All right, next up, very quickly, we have Willem Hoy. Um, he's basically the guy who created the whole entire maker movement here in Singapore. Um, he's going to talk a little bit about the IoT with expert. Uh, expert, sorry, expert. So it's uh, an Espresso Lite version 2, which is an Arduino compatible ESP8266. Wi-Fi development board for makers and novices uh, to build their own IoT projects. So, are we ready? We good? Okay. All right. Without further ado, uh, let me have a round of applause for William. All right. Thank you so much uh, for the introduction. Um, it's really great to be here. Uh, I used to work in the science center and. Apparently today, 18th of uh, March, happens to be my uh, last day of service two years ago. So it's really nice that two years later I'm back uh, as a speaker. Um, I, I know the title is uh, IoT and Expert. How interesting, right? So I normally like even more interesting titles. So I wanted to touch on um, this idea that uh, what can we do about IoT? If let's say you do not have billion dollar, a billion dollar in your pocket, right? So how can we uh, implement? So the idea is how how can we implement a democratized uh, IoT strategy? Uh, I put it the maker way because I, I wear many hats. Uh, one as uh, the one the co-founder of the One Maker Group, we operate the National uh, Prototyping Center at the NDC. Uh, at the same time. I also host uh, or used to host Maker Meetup on a very regular basis and uh, we started the SG Maker Association. Uh, today I'm wearing the hat of a startup entrepreneur. Um, my background is I'm in education. I have been a school teacher for the last 15 years. My last uh, two and a half years I spent in the Science Centre. So today I'm very privileged to address a bunch of uh, eminent geeks and uh, uh, hackers, so hopefully, uh, please correct me if I'm not too technical uh, because I'm a school teacher. All right, um, I, I like this smart nation thing because uh, I kind of like get, got started uh, with uh, organizing events right at the time smart nation initiative was, was announced. Um, and of course, uh, over the time, uh, you know, we love to do smart things, but unfortunately, as citizens or at least people who live in Singapore, sometimes uh, just have a nagging feeling that you often get neglected, right? Because uh, hey, smart nation is nice, smart city is cool, smart cars are awesome, but what, what about citizens? You know, shouldn't they be smart as well? You know, uh, do they matter? So these are some of the nagging things I always have as an educator. Now, my company wants to. Uh, so, I mean, I'll, I'll share with you a brief history about how we started the company, but at the same time, uh, to introduce the uh, expert. Expert is the name of the company, and we, we are proud to say that we are an IoT company, and we aim to be an IoT platform company. Uh, I believe there's, there are only 300 companies in the world that profess to be an IoT platform company. What an IoT platform company does is that it has uh, full-scale end-to-end -end infrastructure uh, surrounding uh, things like uh, how do you get sensor data to uh, controlling uh, uh, to getting the uh, infrastructure to talk with microcontrollers uh, having uh, a type of communication protocol that sends information to the cloud and then how do we get this big data to be analyzed to be visualized and to make sense so that people could make data driven decision guess what uh, as a startup, we actually are able to do all this already. Um, my company started in November last year, and we are very small. If I say my company, it's only two person, me and my co-founder. And of course, uh, we have employee number one, uh, so there's only three of us. And uh, we know what it means to be small. Uh, after all, I've been living in a small island for the last 25 years, so it's really uh, tough to when we look at you know, all the big guys out there who are giants in the IoT circle and IoT world. 
And uh, a quick glance on this slide will show you that if you are going into IoT business, you are up against these uh, brands. You know, every one of them is a billion dollar company with either billion dollar market cap or with revenues in excess of billions. You know, that's what, nine zeros. Uh, what are your chances? Hello, startup, 2% made in Singapore. What are your chances? IoT platform, wow, that is a bold statement. Huh? So what are your chances? Oh, well, um, you know what? The only thing I can say is that um, I dare say 97% of the world population doesn't really care about IoT. Probably because they don't understand, probably because they don't have access, or probably because uh, it is too, there's still room for the market to grow. Okay. This, I, did not pick, I did not pluck these figures from the air. Uh, I met with um, Dr. Tan from I Square R, uh, A Star. Uh, this is government statistics. You know, apparently, uh, let's say, look at in Singapore, you know, at least 97% uh, do not understand what's IoT, and which leave only 3% of uh, people who actually do do IoT. So this is actually a very good market, you know. But in this case, what are your chances if, let's say, you are a two-man, a three-man company and you want to build an IoT business? So one of the things that we always ask ourselves is that, can there be a way for at least IoT to be democratized? Which means that it doesn't really matter how much money you have in your bank or how much investors you have at your back you can have access to it. You can have access to, or at least you can participate. You have a voice in this, uh, in this market. And uh, in order to do that, we need to be able to lead the masses to adopt IoT. So my eyes are on the 97%. As an educator, I look for the people who are untrained, uninitiated, uninformed. These are my target audience, all right? So this is an opportunity actually for small guys to actually come in and lead the mass adoption of IoT. Because big companies have problems with this. If big companies already have solutions to it, then everybody will be using many of these companies' uh, platform. Unfortunately, the reality is, is far from truth. Okay? It is almost like the, 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 the period where before computers have windows, when uh, we still have to operate in DOS, how many people would buy a computer and put it in their home? Only when there's a shift in terms of the way we interact with computers, the way we, so it's the same with IoT. I believe that once there is a shift in the way we interact with IoT, that's where there will be a mass adoption. Okay, and we hope to be uh, part of this uh, uh, process of leading the masses to adopt it. And uh, I'd like to coin what Steve Jobs said about Regis McKenna. He says the best marketing is education. My kind of word, you know. So the best, so although when we tell people that, hey, you know, we educate people, we, we sell cheap microcontroller, Wi-Fi development boards, and you know, and you are in the education business, everybody will poo poo this idea. Ah, this is a low value uh, 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 enterprise. Uh, yeah, why not? I mean, it, of course, but everyone has to educate the masses. Big companies like to say that there's an $11 trillion market in, by 2020 or 2030, but who is going to educate the market? And who is going to kind of like help to grow? Okay, somebody has to, so why not? Let us, let us do it. So I, I, I subscribe to the, the maker movement. We believe in several tenets that uh, help us to do what uh, we do. I left the civil service just to pursue uh, or eat, at least eat my own dog food. I believe the maker uh, the way. And uh, I want to share with you three tenets of uh, what we always tell people. Okay, uh, when uh, what what do we believe as as a maker? Number one is to have a growth mindset. The mindset to or the belief that anyone can learn anything. Today I do not know how to program doesn't mean. 
I get disqualified because tomorrow I can learn. The next day I can learn. You know, uh, it is not impossible for somebody to be able to pick up knowledge and to be able to learn as long as the person is willing to decide that he's going to learn. And we ourselves have gone through this process of learning. For me as an ex-school teacher, um, I really learned a lot and there are a lot of things I don't understand. In fact, half the time the talk, I, I, I don't understand. But over the years, okay, it becomes better. Right? At least I know half of what uh, people are talking in gig camps or in, 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 in events like this. We look at the giants, such as big companies, and we say to ourselves, you know what, let's not recreate the wheel. Let's not uh, be their competitor. There's no way you can be a competitor. But if you take a quote from Sir Isaac Newton, if I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giant. If you want to really go forward, we cannot be a competitor to the giants. We have to work with the giant, if possible, stand on top of the shoulder of the giant. In fact, we are already doing that. Uh, as a little small startup, we use a lot of third-party software, a lot of third-party infrastructure, things that we don't build ourselves, simply because we cannot afford to. And we want to thank that because of these big giants, this billion-dollar company, it gives us the kind of assurance that something that we built at least have a bit of longevity, at least a bit of standard and a bit of quality. So competition is not actually bad. So we must be thankful that uh, companies can actually build on top of what other companies have already built. So I think that is, the, first of all, a shift in the mindset that uh, we need to be able to have. That is, we've got to learn from how this company become big in the first place. Just want to share with you that uh, this is a very crude early prototype of the product that we made. This is the Espresso-like prototype, um, the first that came out. Uh, you know, it's hand soldered and it's really crude. Uh, I don't know why. Like when you look at it, I feel embarrassed now. You know, like who? You know, when you when you first build it, yeah, it's so cool. Then when you look at it, it's it's yucks. You know, I mean, I wish I could build a uh, much better, but that was what uh, we could afford, and it became something that people actually like. The most interesting thing is, people actually like it more than we do. People actually like to use it more than we do. So we actually made like a few hundred of this and people actually bought it and until the, the point where I couldn't fulfill the, 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 the orders, which I had to apologize and you know, people actually transferred money to our PayPal, but I couldn't f fulfill the order. You know? so, so that was a very good uh, validation in terms of that, hey, maybe somebody out there actually believe in, in this. And um, anyway, the reason why I share this is that uh, building hardware is not our forte. We, we are amateurs. We, we don't build hardware for a living. But thankfully, but thankfully, because we also uh, share these ideas with others. So a second tenet that I want to share is that makers believe in open sharing. That is not afraid to tell others how it works. Shamelessly, we take this product. You know, we go and ask people to make it for us professionally. You know. And uh, there were some encounters which actually kind of like put us off a bit. You know, it's like, you know, you, you ask this guy uh, or you, you, you kind of preempt this manufacturer, hey, I'm going to build this. And two, three weeks later, there's a similar product that, that, that comes out. You know, so you're a, bit, you're a bit like wary about, you know, who do you want to work with? So, uh, so in sometime in uh, December, we actually, I was in uh, Malaysia. Uh, I, I met some guy through the Penang Maker Fair, and they were very interested in helping us to build this product. And I was very worried because I don't have money to pay these guys to build the product yet because we have not kind of like started on our fundraising. We are still bootstrapping. And uh, lo and behold, the, the, the offer, hey, we'd like to uh, take your license. Can you license this product to us? You know, <laughs> you know I'm like, what? This crap, you, you, you really want it? You know? So, so I said, wow, why not, why not? So here you go. And uh, so that was the story how Espresso Beta become Espresso version 2. The engineers from Cytron, they were amazing. They solved a lot of problems uh, such as, you know, when we first used the, uh, this module, one of the things you got to do is to do a manual reset each time before you flash uh, the Arduino uh, sketch. 
uh, and there's no way we could solve it. My co-founder, Jimmy, he owns a couple of businesses in Thailand, so he, he, he had engineers under his payroll and they couldn't solve that problem as well until the, there was one uh, design engineer who did set on solving that problem and he, he manually routed every single track and created uh, Frankenstein called the version 2. It was one of the best design ever, ever, we ever uh, come across and we think that this thing has potential. Okay? It is not the best board. We don't say we have the best board. We, it's, not, it's not the best. In fact, there are other boards which are more uh, user-friendly, more beautiful and more well adopted. We are not going to compete with them. The boards that we made is made for a certain purpose. Okay? It is made for people who require uh, an OLED display on top of the microcontroller. Just like in the 60s, you know, mainframes. Uh, people were mainframe in punch cards, they don't have a terminal. Until Jobs and Wozniak you know, put a terminal, hook up a TV onto a board, and then you have a computer. So in this case, uh, we think that we are creating that, that so-called um, you know, breakthrough, not really breakthrough, but something different by adding something which I think will be very useful for the users to have a display to at least uh, be able to see what's happening when you actually boot up the, the, uh, the um, unit. Right, so um, thankfully we actually shared this with a lot of people and in this case we, 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 we want to take it upon ourselves to take this device and use it to educate or in educational terms to curate learning experience. Okay, so for the purpose of uh, demystifying IoT making it palatable, you know, enjoyable for the masses. Well, this like, sounds like a mission, mission statement, right? And that is exactly what uh, I really want to be part of, that is to help people to be less afraid of uh, technology because, after all, uh, things doesn't have to be as complex for people of a certain level, right? The geeks and developers can, can talk about codes and hardware, and, you know, but for the 97 percent, they, they are more interested in terms of can I participate? Can I use it? Can I use it to build something that is going to be very useful for my home, right? And that is what we intend to do. So we have so what we call uh, um, our our platform consists of an app, a board, and a cloud. Basically, the ABC model, right? Um, we have finished the board. We have. The board is actually out of our hands. It's being manufactured and being distributed by Cytron, uh, our partner company. We are now concentrating on building our, or completing our cloud and our app. Uh, and one of the things which, which we are so-called doing a preview at this Force Asia is that uh, to look at how people react when they see an uh, interface which is something which they don't often see before, that is using augmented reality. In the past, if I want to build an input uh, device to control a microcontroller, I have to spend time soldering, putting buttons and stuff like that. You know? And if I were to, let's say, uh, for the sake of discussion and, and illustration, if I were to build an Amazon Dash button, I can build it. You know, the cost is about 5 to $7 if I can have someone ordering a million. You know, I can build it, you know, and you know, I, we, we, I was in Jakarta and you know, I, I was talking to the cafe owner, would you like to buy a thousand of these buttons and give it to your friends or customers and when they want a coffee, they can press a button and the Gojek driver will drive and pick up your coffee and deliver to your customer. Wouldn't it be nice? And he asked, how much is it? Maybe five US dollar if you buy one million, you know. So he said, wow, uh, let me think about it. Now, five dollars per unit is actually not, not a lot, but you, you multiply by a big a factor is really, really quite costly. Now, what happens if when we use AR, we are basically replacing the physical with the virtual? You know, instead of a physical button, I just need to have a marker, which can be later turned into uh, some sort of a virtual button, which will behave the same way. You know, just press a, physical, a virtual button, and then a Gojek driver will pick up the coffee and deliver to your doorstep, okay? Minus the cost of building uh, input interface. Now, so if you, if you can sense where I'm going is that 
this kind of approach actually allow people to open up limitless possibilities in terms of having AR interfacing with a physical microcontroller such as the Expresso Lite. Again, uh, this is still very early, so I do not want to go into business pitch, but I just want to share that this is something which we see it from the ground up, from the user, making it easy for people to play or interact with IoT. It must be like what Jack Ma says, you know, like, you know, why is he so interested in bringing internet or, uh, or commerce into China, you know, and his vision is basically, you know, internet commerce, it should be as, as you don't even think about it, it's like electricity. When you turn on the light, you get the light already. You don't even have to think about it. IoT should be something like this. It should be so pervasive, so part of you that you don't even have to think about it. You press on, press a, press a button or do something, that is IoT. You know, that is actually something which, uh, wow, wouldn't it be nice how utopian it is. So back to our product, um, we, we don't claim that we are the best, neither do we say we know everything. So we say that we are who we are because we share with many people and they are part of our success. So we will say that, well, this uh, project is conceptualized in Singapore, developed in Thailand, made in Malaysia, and let's innovate with ASEAN. Okay? When you fly ASEAN flag, nobody can say no one. Uh, usually, you know, 600, 600 person economy, who dares to challenge it, right? So ASEAN is the right word to play in the next few years to come. Okay, the third uh, tenets I want to share is craftsmanship. That is to do your best even when no one is looking. That is the kind of standards, the kind of quality that we need to push up. Unfortunately, I'm not Steve Jobs. Unfortunately, uh, you know, we don't have his DNA. We cannot be like him, but we can learn that he is, this is, this is really his word, you know, beauty, craftsmanship, quality. And uh, I just want to show you where, just this is something which uh, we did, uh, just to show you how, what we mean by having an AR overlay uh, to create a physical interface, right? Okay, you got a button that you can press, uh, slider, uh, it's a knob, right? Uh, or you can uh, create an, an robotic arm, you know. Yeah, so these are some of the, the possibilities and you can use this to control a physical microcontroller such as the Expresso, right? So um, we, uh, we want to use our hardware to help people build something cheap, fast and easily. So um, this is also, a, I want to use this time. How much time do you have? Wrap up. Wrap up already. Okay, last slide any. Um, Okay, forget it, forget it. Okay, this is cloud. Check the website. Uh, this is what we do. Uh, see you soon. Okay, uh, we'll be traveling. We'll be uh, beating drums, sell medicine. You know, if you happen to be in town, uh, opening your homes, couch, cafe. Uh, we are in the middle of fundraising. Uh, life as an entrepreneur is quite hard. You know, I got kid, young kid, you know, very cute. You know, quite poor thing, you know. Uh, birthday coming, don't know what to buy, you know, support, support. Okay, <laughs> thank you.